Thanks for listening to the Pop Culture Cosmos and the PCC Multiverse. Check out more great podcasts today on one of these awesome affiliate networks. You're listening to a Weeby Geeks Network podcast. You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. The Tangibound Network. Check it out. Tangiboundnetwork.com. Listen to this show, the latest episode, every time. A proud member of the Gunna Geek Network. The opinions expressed are those of each individual. Check out all the other geeky podcasts over at GunnaGeekNetwork.com and get ready because geekiness begins in 3, 2, 1. On this week's episode, it's time for Spring Movie Preview. TJ Johnson has some pop culture memories. And is Dave Grohl being possessed by the devil? All this and more as we reach our next stop, the PCC Multiverse. Don't be alarmed. The quasi-shimmering light before you is a trans-dimensional gateway to other worlds, other voices, other thoughts, and other realities. Up feels like down, and down feels like the number seven on a Wednesday morning. Don't worry. That quivering, blood-boiling sensation under your eyebrows is all a part of the charm. Welcome to the PCC Multiverse. And we're back with another episode of the PCC Multiverse. This is Gerald Glassford from Pop Culture Cosmos, Game Source, Inside Sports Fantasy Football, and the Lakers Fast Break. We truly appreciate everyone out there listening to all of our shows. And if you can, please give us a five-star review wherever you get your podcasts. Plus, if you can like, share, subscribe, follow, or do anything that you can to support us right here at the Pop Culture Cosmos, popculturecosmos.com, the Lakers Fast Break, Game Source, Inside Sports Fantasy Football, and everything that we do here at Pop Culture Cosmos, including our awesome Facebook page, where we cover the latest news and trends in pop culture right there for you at Pop Culture Cosmos on Facebook, plus all of our social media, and the fact that we are the number one tabletop RPG streamer on Facebook right there at the Pop Culture Cosmos. And if you can support us at all on any or all of those platforms, it is sincerely appreciated. Well, Melinda Barkhouse Ross is off this week, so in her place, we have not one, not two, but three great interviews lined up for you. We've got a lot of things going on, including Hamanish Goel stopping by as it's time for our spring movie preview as we break down the major releases over the next 10 weeks leading up to Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. I also have T.J. Johnson returning as he shares some candid thoughts on where his love for pop culture came from. These guys have been an awesome part of our shows here in 2022, so it will be great catching up with both of them on today's program. And with the latest wide release in theaters being the Dave Grohl and the Foo Fighters horror project Studio 666, who better to get some thoughts on this but none other than super fan Jay Bartlett, who also makes a return to the program. He'll share some thoughts on the movie and where his appreciation for Dave Grohl originated from, and he'll also get you up to date on all of his projects, including his YouTube channel, the Jay and Rob Toy Show, and Action Figure Adventure. So stay tuned for a great program, and it all starts off right now, with our spring movie preview right here on the PCC Multiverse. You're listening to the Pop Culture Cosmos. All right, and we're back with the Pop Culture Cosmos. It's Gerald Glasser coming right back at you here. want to thank you so much for watching and listening. Thought we would go ahead and cover some of the major theatrical releases coming up in the next couple months leading up to Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, which comes out the first week of May. But what happens during the spring? There's some really good titles coming out. And there's also one major one that got pulled to digital streaming. We'll talk about that one. Plus also as well, could there be another Squid Game on the way that's being released in the next couple of months? 
we might have a suggestion for you. So we'll talk about that. But here today to do so is a good man indeed. You got to go ahead and check him out every time he goes and appears right here at the Pop Culture Cosmos, plus all over the world on podcasts that you can find worldwide. It is Hamanish Goel. And Hamanish, thank you so much as always for stopping by, Hamanish. Truly yeah. appreciate it. Thought we'd talk shop on the movies because you know me. I love my pop culture. <laughs> this weekend, we saw the release of Uncharted, a game that, you know, if you look right over here, I've got as far as a standee for Uncharted 3. So I love it so much next to my Mass Effect there. The Uncharted series has meant so much to me over the years. Hopefully, it will kick off a nice spring now that people are in the U.S. and in certain areas around the world are starting to go back to the theaters once again because restrictions are being lifted here and there. But good to have you here, my friend, and we'll talk some shop on some movies. Yeah, it's good. It's good to be here. I mean, especially getting to hear that, you know, the movies are coming up with Uncharted and Doctor Strange and its big spot on the Super Bowl and also the film Dog, which has Channing Tatum. I feel like it hit me on a personal note, but I don't know about others. Well, Dog, I will say with Channing Tatum, even though it is not going to do financially as well as Uncharted, it may do better as far as because it was a lower budget film. And it's also yeah. might have longer legs because it is a much more critically hailed film as much as 90% of Rotten Tomatoes. So I do want to give Channing Tatum and Dog the credit that it deserves on building what could be thought of as a more well thought of film when all is said and done in the history books. But for right now, we're going to be talking about what's coming up to theaters and as far as the major theatrical releases. So I want to touch on, really, when it comes down to it, the end of February is Studio 666, which is being done by Dave Grohl, who we all know from the music world. And this right. is his uh, part into comedy horror. So... I'll leave that as it were. We'll listen, you know, I don't see it getting, even though it's going wide, I don't see it getting that wide of an audience. But I mentioned X as far as for the month of March. Really, the only other movie of note, this was the last real major weekend of this month because everything out that's coming out for the rest of the month is really not going to be a wide release that really is going to get anybody's interest. Maybe outside of X, which is a horror movie based off of a uh, adult movie set type deal. They're trying to film an adult movie on a set of an old mysterious farm. And unfortunately the well, a mysterious farm becomes very mysterious with a, you know, a murder slashing thing. So for horror fans, they'll at least have that. But the next big movie comes in March, March 4th with the Batman. A new variation of Batman, which categorizes Robert Pattinson in the always angry mode of Batman that he is. But your thoughts on Batman as it heads back into a what would have scenario Batman have done in the second year of his existence? I mean, as we all know, there's always a, a different version of Batman, whether it be Ben Affleck or it be Christian Bale, the ones that I've seen. And there's also... Michael Keaton's coming back. Yeah. Michael Keaton, exactly. You know, there's so many variations of the Batman. And, I, and as always with now Robert Pattinson, you know, I always expect that, I think the the brand Batman and, or in, and Superman, but in this case, Batman is extremely big for the sake being that it all depends on the story. You know, how they characterize the villain, how are they going to kind of put the spin to it? You know, what is the visual effect? What is the visual that they're trying to leave on? Like in the Christopher Nolan series, it was a very dark, it had that like the edginess of that character within Christian Bale and you could see it throughout. Then when you see the Ben Affleck one, it's more of like that pop-up superhero comic type of Ben Affleck. But in this one, the one that has Robert Pattinson, it's, it has a more of a feel where... It's like, a, it looks like it's from the 90s, but it's not. Like, it, it has that 90s effect in there, like an old time, like you see, it, 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 it makes it feel like the Batman from the 90s, but it, it, it's in its current state. And it also presented a, a newer villain that we haven't seen as before, which is the Riddler. Yes, yeah. the Riddler, absolutely. The Riddler, uh, actually the Riddler we did last see a long time ago as far as a variation of it with Jim Carrey, who played... The Riddler in one of Joel Schumacher's Batmans, I believe, was Batman Forever. But yes, he did play a variation of the Riddler along with Tommy Lee Jones as Two-Face at that point in time. But 
I also wanted to mention as well that in March 11th with two digital and once the theaters was turning red from Pixar, which covers a great story in regards to just a, a young lady who has the ability to turn into a big, huge red fox. Something that I know when I spoke to someone that I know works at Pixar was very fond of, was very highly thought of as far as the whole crew was very proud to have worked on it. I'm very happy that Turning Red is coming out on March 11th. Kind of disappointed. It's a kind of slow time in the month of March. Would have liked to have seen it go to theaters. Your thoughts on Turning Red from Pixar? Yeah, I mean, I I saw a glimpse of it. It has, you know, when it, when the first teaser came out, I didn't really get what the director was trying to approach it with. But then when I saw the emotion of behind what every Pixar film has, this human touch to it, I feel like there there is some, it kind of looks like a big Hero 6, but there's no robot like companion, except it's within... Within, within the young lady, it's, yeah. she, she whether she's trying to help it or not, she she turns into this big red fox. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, yeah. And again, it's a very cute story from what I'm seeing, from what I'm hearing from those uh, that I've spoke to and that work at Pixar. They really are very proud of the movie and they're hopeful for the success. And you know, Disney Plus with its 130 million plus subscribers, yeah. which just ended the book of Boba Fett, needs a lot of content in between now and Moon Knight that comes out late oh, March. Right. So, yeah, you know, right now, turning red, I think, is probably going to be the key for them. So, I think that was the major factor. Although, I think at this point in time, when this, there's nothing currently coming out that's at me in the middle of March, would have been great to see it in theaters. But you know what? Hey, it's still going to get a lot of success. Anything yeah. like Encanto, which has seen a, a great deal of success on mm -hmm. Disney Plus, can't wait to see what happens there. Again, there's X coming out later in the month of March. I think for horror fans, you're probably going to get your fix there if you didn't get it from Studio 666. So, you know, just a lot of stuff going on there as far as from the horror genre. But really, when it comes down to it, we don't see a whole lot of action until really getting into the month of April. That's when you start seeing a little bit more interest as far as wide releases are concerned. And Morbius, which was delayed from January, it's Sony saying, hey, you know what, Spider-Man No Way Home is doing so well. Let's go ahead and bump Morbius, which is a continuation of the Spider-Verse. Let's yeah. move that a few months back to give it some space, to give it some time. Obviously, the fact that Omicron was still an overriding factor as well, I think that played into it. But yes, Morbius is now firmly locked into an April 1st release date. Your yeah. thoughts on Morbius? Well, from the well, tremendous success we saw from Spider-Man No Way Home and just the type of storytelling approach they had to it, I do not see a reason why Morbius would not be a film that anyone would would not want to see. Like they would want to see, of course. And I think what they've started doing is they've started giving Spider-Man villains its own solo films to show their here charismatic of the good and bad between their eyes, just like how we see, see in Venom being played by Tom Hardy. So I see it doing the success of what a Venom or maybe more could do because no one expected the, su the success of what Black Panther would have done and uh, to do that big of a number because sometimes castings... Sometimes the right casting is what makes it all effortless. But at the same time, the question you should have asked was, we've been seeing too much of Tom Holland back to back. <laughs> we saw him in Spider-Man Nowhere Home and not Uncharted. Well, you won't be seeing him in Morbius unless it's a cameo on, in a, a cut scene, at, you know, in a, yeah. a mid-credit scene on the very end or, or on the very end. So uh, end credit scene or mid-credit scene. So... I think you shouldn't worry about seeing Tom Holland if he returns to the Spider-Man universe. I think he's going to be very hesitant to do so unless it's for something he really believes in. And I'm not sure Morbius is it. So we'll see what happens again. Obviously, the idea is to get hopefully a Sinister Six against Spider-Man, whoever that Spider-Man may be. So we'll see what happens there. But the really the competition starts on Amazing. April 8th because you have Ambulance, which was showcased in and around the Super Bowl with Jake Gyllenhaal and just really a, a cast that starts off with Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, who's really started to 
gain a niche for himself since playing Black Manta in the Aquaman movie. He's done and, the latest Matrix movie. He's done a few other movies as well. So he's starting to get a, a higher and higher profile. The only thing with this, if you've checked it out, it's a movie directed by Michael Bay about an ambulance. So you know there's a lot of action. There's supposed to be a heist of some kind dealing with the ambulance. There's like 10,000 cuts within the first five seconds on the trailer. You don't really know what's going on. The thing is, when you probably watch the movie, it'd be like every other Michael Bay movie where you really don't know what's going on because you've got so many cuts coming in and out in front of you. So I want to hear your thoughts on Ambulance. Do you think with the competition there in place, do you think it actually will go ahead and find some success? With every generation, there's always a certain trend that's there, you know, in terms of films that come with. And I feel like action is one of them. No matter what way you present it, it somehow gets its audience, just like how horror does from like seeing The Sixth Sense. <laughs> You're talking M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah. So whether it's something as that deep as a horror or something as big of an action, like what Michael Bay has directed from Transformers to Bad Boys to now Ambulance, they eventually find their audience. It might not be that big event film, but it will find its audience for folks that just want that fun action film no-brainer type of a feel well, we'll see because that same weekend sonic the hedgehog 2 which we've oh. also seen trailers for this past weekend at the super bowl that drops on the same weekend and also a movie that's going under the radar that i absolutely love the trailer for i'm just a big fan of hers it's michelle yo's new movie everything everywhere all at once i highly yes. recommend people checking out that trailer it's going to be something I think it's going to be a little bit of a surprise. It's going to be a, probably an under-the-radar hit. It may not do well until it gets to digital, but it comes out on that same contested weekend. So please, everyone, check check out a tra- check out the trailer. You can do so if you scroll down or search it for search for it on the Pop Culture Cosmos Facebook page because I've got it right there. It was a really entertaining trailer, so I'm hopeful for the success of the movie. Hey, this is Chad from Ghost Toasters, and you're listening to Pop Culture Cosmos Podcast. You've heard others, but nothing could prepare you for the shameful stupidity that is the Jock and Nerd Podcast. Here, Imran. So if you offend everyone at once, it all it's a wash. I've covered everybody. Anthony. Sorry, I was texting. Say that again. And Rug Boy. Yeah, whenever there's a snowstorm, my slack hole tightens up. As they talk over one another. Just exactly uh, the same Connor as, was J- as Terminator. We're talking over each other. It's fine. Sorry. Swear and ask you for money. Just give us the money. Witness the hubris as they claim to be the world's authority on comic book movies. Who said that? Never said that. You've never said that. Who cares? A jock said that. Comic book, TV, movie reviews, news, and whatever they choose. Available on Apple Podcasts. Spotify, and wherever you find your favorite podcasts. The Jock and Nerd Podcast. It can't be silly, goofy fun. Seriously, people really listen to this. Uh. Jock and Nerd! April 15th, the next weekend, we've got a little bit more competition because those movies will be facing off against the latest installment of the Fantastic Beast saga, The Secrets of Dumbledore. How oh. do you think that will fare the last time we saw a fantastic beast movie it did not perform to expectations we already know what happened as far as johnny depp no longer be, being part of the series mads mickelson has replaced him your thoughts on this fantastic beast the secrets of dumbledore and if it can find or regain that harry potter audience well there well i can say this much They've done a good job in the sense of branding Harry Potter and kind of getting their fans back because they had a reunion come out on HBO Max, um, which I'm not I'm not sure if you're aware of, but they had all the cast of Harry yes, Potter. I'm just, I'm aware. <laughs> and they kind of just talked about, you know, their experience of how was it being on the Harry Potter set. And I think yes. that built up built up the excitement for the secrets of Dumbledore. And Dumbledore being in pretty much all the films of the wizarding world makes it a bit i think has a brand to it itself with the fantastic beasts attached to it hopefully the story does well with the brand that it has to present because it it has something to do with dumbledore's story and they've had a huge success with the reunion of harry potter and hopefully they have 
the eighth installment of Harry Potter in the works if if this does well. I mean, who wouldn't want to see a cursed child on screen? But we'll wait and see. Again, uh, this is something I don't hold as much confidence in because I saw the last Fantastic Beasts movie and someone who myself has watched the harry potter movies and is not a big harry potter fan the only one in my household who's not i don't hold as much confidence in this movie finding the same kind of success but we'll wait and see maybe the time is we'll, maybe the time between the second movie and this movie will give it kind of a refresh look and people will look at it quite differently the only other wide release then uh, that weekend which is april 15th would be Father Stu with Mark Wahlberg. So we'll see what happens now that he's going to be playing Sully in the Uncharted movie. See what kind of success he could, this will lead into for Father Stu. The next weekend for April 22nd, two interesting movies, two very diverse movies. First off is Nicolas Cage in the Nicolas Cage revival series as far as, because he does so many movies, but he's gaining traction as far as becoming a, a marketable talent once again with the unbearable weight of massive talent, which pokes a lot of fun at him as a lead action hero, along with Pedro Pascal. I've seen the trailer for this. It's very entertaining. Check it out, my friend, because again, it's Nicolas Cage has found in the past couple of years, you know, after making so many terrible movies and low grade movies and low budget movies and B grade movies has found a niche in going ahead and, and having roles or making movies that poke a lot of fun at himself at this stage of his life and i think this is one of them so if you get a chance check out the but, trailer for this actually we've dropped it about a month ago on the pop culture cosmos facebook page or you can go ahead and and check it out whenever you can on youtube the other major movie before we get into may and the, this is the movie last part of our spring look uh, before we go ahead and you're with your thoughts on a movie that you really think will resonate with an audience that's coming out during this time frame and that's The Bad Guys, which is an animated feature from Universal Pictures. We all know what they've done in the past regarding their animated features. I mean, the Despicable Me characters, they've really done as well. The Minions movies, that has done as well, very well uh, also. So I think people need to go ahead and, and just re be prepared to go ahead and see something that I think a lot of people are going to, it's going to resonate with a lot of people because the Universal Animation Studios have really done well. This could be a movie that could surprise. It features a, a nice cast of characters, including Sam Rockwell and Aquafina playing roles. The point I wanted to make about Nicolas Cage was there was a film he had called Pig, and that had a that did very well. And I, in terms of acting talent, yes. and um, you know, a lot of the time something works, and I guess because of the history he's had with being in Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse, that might be one of the reasons he's starting to get uh, better scripts. So, Yes, yeah, so his career has been on a downslide, but then, you know, he, he's being rediscovered by an audience of the past couple of years, so that's good to see. Yes, and that is, again, like I mentioned earlier, as far as the animated feature of the bad guys, so looking forward to it when it comes out in April 22nd. So there you have it, the major releases from now until late april when we're nearing the time for the great movie from marvel well we'll see how great it is from the movie yeah. from <laughs> the next hit movie from marvel most likely in the mcu dr strange and the multiverse of madness hits but before we head on out my friend i've been asking you to go ahead and find the next great hit from bollywood something that will resonate with a worldwide audience something that you can say that you helped discover and hopefully that will become a worldwide hit one of those movies that you think is a possibility actually debuts and releases to theaters in late March. So your thoughts on RRR before we head on it. Yeah, so RRR, Roar, Rise, Revolt, the full acronym. It's a film about brothership and friendship. And I think the director, Asis Rajamuli, has done a very good job kind of showcasing his sound with his last two films being more in like a mega epic because in the Hindu culture, we have our own superheroes that we have to tell stories on. And we also have these mythological wars and stories, which are true and some which are made on the spot. And he made that type of a film beforehand, which was at a grander state. And with this RRR, he's trying to tell that exact same story at a scale at which 
a squid game is where storytelling is at the peak of its level. You know, they, you have a diverse cast from all industries in the Bollywood industry that coming to be a part of this magnificent vision of his. And I feel like just the entire audience, whether if they decide to put this out in theaters where everyone in the United States or worldwide can see, I feel like we'll have a resonating touch because I remember taking to them to one of his previous films even though the language was not at the same pitch, they could understand from the visuals he was trying to tell. So his storytelling is very strong than what I've seen in any filmmaker. That being said, just like how all the other Hollywood films have started coming out, a lot of the big budget Bollywood films have also are starting to come out this season. So hopefully RRR can reach a mass audience that will see its story for the brothership friendship just a civil independence, I think, that they have to tell. If I had to, like, combine Hollywood films in this area, it's like taking on Nightmare Alley and a Bella Fast with a sprinkle of a bit of a King Richard, a little bit of that. All right. Well, that sounds interesting indeed. Let's hope it will resonate around the world, like we've seen from properties such as Money Heist from Spain and Squid Game from Korea. Maybe... It will become one of the next big hits. So we'll see what happens there. But we'd love to hear your thoughts. PopCultureCosmos at Yahoo.com. Well, my friend, great to have you here. Thank you so much for joining me on this preview. Any last thoughts on any movies you want to see before we head on out? Well, one last thought with the Doctor Strange film that comes out in May. I have a little of doubts because of the fact being is when they showed the trailer on the Super Bowl, they had to reshoot the film many times. So I don't know if they are going to be able to hit the storytelling piece of it as much as they have thought to around the May time when it releases. So let's see, because there was a glimpse of a very notable person that plays his roles in the X-Men series. Okay, well, we'll wait and see on that one. But it is, again, Hamanish Goel. Check him out wherever he stops by on any podcast that he's on or right here. (laughs) <laughs> at the Pop Culture Cosmos. Coming up next, it's TJ Johnson on his love for pop culture. And right after that, it's Jay Bartlett stopping by. He's going to be talking about Dave Grohl's latest pet project. It's actually a movie, a horror movie, coming to theaters this weekend. It's the horror movie Studio 666. And he's a big super fan of Dave Grohl. And he'll tell you why, horror fans, you need to check it out this weekend. That's coming up next, right after the break. This is the PCC Multiverse. And if you're ready to talk toys, I haven't stopped talking toys. Let's get to it. It's the Jay and Rob Toy Show, and we're back for season two for 10 more episodes of Toy Talking Goodness. And this time, we talk Marvel figures, we talk DC figures, holy grails, play sets, what if scenarios, and so much more. But we're not alone. We've brought a few friends with us this time. All that and, of course, our action figure spotlight. So check out the Jay and Rob Toy Show Season 2, exclusively on Jinx Esports TV Canada. Something I've been meaning to ask everybody that works with us here at the Pop Culture Cosmos is your origins in pop culture and your origin as far as where the desire for various facets of pop culture that we talk about here in the show, where did it start? Where did it emanate from? And and just basically, while pop culture is so important to us here on this show, for many, it's just like a mm-hmm. casual passing thing. But we talk about so many different things. It definitely hits each and every person that's out there with something that they like. How did this fascination with various facets of pop culture become so important in your life? Ooh, that's a good question. I try to ask well, the good questions. I'm... I, see, I only say I the bad questions you're... for Wordle. <laughs> you are a professional. So I'd say my, my introduction to pop culture came, oh, goodness, if I could go this far back, 19, no, 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 1988, 89. So I want to say four or five years old, sitting in front of the TV, watching, you know, your the real Ghostbusters, Thundercats, mm-hmm. He-Man, um, all those Saturday morning, all those, you know, weekday morning cartoons before you you go to the school or i remember i remember vivid memories of watching these shows before, while eating cereal getting ready to go to, to to kindergarten and getting ready to 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 go to the babysitters or just things of that nature and 
they they get attached to memories right you have those memories and they get attached to certain time periods and, and points of your life where you remember the smell of the cereal that's being poured you remember the smell of the coffee in the morning you remember they're they're, they're, they're attached to memories let's put it that way and mm -hmm. so i could almost think about where i was in life based on those shows like the real ghostbusters i can remember you know, Saturday mornings, me and my younger brother just hanging out and, and watching TV in the living room and, and, and just enjoying life. And then you start going to things like Thundercats and then you go into things like Power Rangers, which I just introduced my, my almost two-year-old son to the other day. And uh, he seems to love it. So you attach them to points in your life and you attach them to memories. You attach them to these periods where you go back and you remember just how much fun life could be. You know, as we get older, Gerald, um, things pop up. Life happens. You go through different changes and, you know, you have different seasons, Gerald. The different things happen and you start looking at different aspects of life through a certain prism. And it's refreshing to be able to have those moments, those pop culture moments where you can say, where were you when, you know, did you, do you remember being in a theater when Captain America lifted Thor's hammer the first time? Do you remember being in a theater where you seen all the Avengers team up on the first time on the screen where they had the panning shot going all the way around? Do you remember those those moments in time? You know, where were you when? It 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 it's a feeling that you you try to hold on to as long as you can, right? It's almost like a almost like a drug. They say that the reason that there are people that are, you know, addicted to to substances or have substance abuse because they're trying to get that that first feeling back and you could never recreate it you can never get that first feeling but you don't stop trying i think for me with pop culture it, it's 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 a ability to get those pieces back as best as i can um and then it, it brings so many people together i think in, a, in the kind of world that we live in where everybody can be so divisive and divided and have varying opinions and and not really be interested in listening to another side it's it's another way for us to find common ground and commonality and it's such a such an important thing that we need as a society as a people today is to find common ground so uh, a very long way of answering that question is it's it's been it's been a part of big moments in my life it's been a part of of, of great memories in my life and it's something that i want to be able to pass that love on to my kids and so they can pass that love on to their kids and you know you can keep it uh going but the these 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 pop culture references these movies these tv shows these cartoons these comics um they've been so ingrained into my very dna my very first movie was the 1988 batman tim burton i remember my i used to go to my my grandparents house and watch that it was 88 or 89 88 or 89 it might be 89. And right in that point is i used to go to my, yeah, I used to go to my grandparents' house, and he used to pop that VHS in every day that we were there, and that would be the, the we watched that every time without fail. And then eventually, he ended up gifting me that particular VHS. And oh, that's um, cool! Just such great, just such great, great, great memories with that. And you know, that kind of started it, that first Batman. And then I used to watch this, the '60s Batman TV show, and and obviously I wasn't around for that, but I got to catch him on syndication, so. I, but it, it it runs deep and it just it's always been uh an escape for me to be able to go and boldly go where no man has gone before or you know to a galaxy far far away and it's just been it's just been an awesome time being able to do that so being able to have those memories and sharing with my family and sharing with my kids and and now i think i'm starting to get my wife into a lot of that stuff so it's uh it's pretty cool it's pretty cool uh, it sounds pretty cool indeed. And anytime you're able to share and enjoy some of the facets yeah. of your life in pop culture that has brought so many great memories to you. And if you're able to share that with others, that's a warm and special feeling. And it sounds like you're doing just that in your house. And that's to be commended. Absolutely, and man. yeah, that's how, we got, you, that's how we got to know each other. That's how we got to know each other. We were on Voice from the Underground, and you, you, know, you, you heard me babbling on and on like an idiot about pop culture. And I, hey, I feel sorry for this guy. Maybe I'll hop on this show sometime. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> no, if anything, you gave me an escape, man. It, it would get heavy, and I needed somebody to pull me out every now and then. Yeah, that show used to get very heavy. It still is in its yeah. new form. I know that they touch mm -hmm. on a lot of dangerous and uh, they touch on a lot of heavy subjects there, and uh, they, they do a great job. In and they doing do a great so. job with it. Yeah, yeah they do. Absolutely. But yeah, if we're a little bit lighter side, and that's something I wanted to do with the show is do something where all the heavy stuff that's out there in the world that people get stressed out over each and every day. Yeah. I don't want to bring that to our show. I, you know, I want to bring the only the pleasant sides of things that people love to talk about, because I know a lot of people at work that when they talk about certain things in life, about world events, politics, mm -hmm. things of that nature, it gets heavy, it gets angry, it gets resentful. Yeah. But whenever yeah. people are sitting around the water cooler and they're talking the latest Boba Fett, or they're talking the latest episode of Peacemaker. Or they're talking the latest episode of Boa Fett. <laughs> they're talking about Moonfall. Well, they're not talking about yeah. Moonfall very much. They're, no, they're talking about, talking yeah, about. they're talking about the latest movies. They're talking about the latest television shows. That brings a lot of joy to people in their description of things. Hey, you got to go check this out. Their enthusiasm. Yeah. That's what really yeah. gets people going around the water cooler. That's what gets really people going as far as families communicating with each other. And now with social media, that's what really gets yep. people going as far as communicating with each other on things that they love. Because I know a lot of people send out negative stuff uh, you know, that's out there in social media that obviously gets a response and sometimes warrants mm -hmm. a response. But when somebody says out there, I love this pop culture product, this television show, this video game, right. this movie, that seems to elicit a lot more favorable responses. And I think that's what a lot of people just enjoy about pop culture is that the fun side of our lives gets blown out there and i think that's and gets represented and i think that's what everybody likes more now i think i think that these are things a lot in a lot of ways that were hidden in the past or frowned on in the past that you couldn't enjoy these things because you were seen as a geek or a nerd but now these days <laughs> you know everybody seems to have some level of pop culture fun even if it's just going ahead and checking out movies on netflix you know what you're engaging in pop culture whether you like it or not you know, it's very true. And I find it interesting that, you know, there are certain that, as you mentioned, that people can have disagreements and they can look at things differently. Right. But it seems to only be in this realm that we can have disagreements and we can actually have conversations that don't always degrade to somebody's stupid or, you know, you can say your piece and listen to somebody else's piece and you can agree to disagree and you can kind of just move on with your day. You know, it it, it it amazes me how we have the capacity to do so with certain subjects and other subjects. We just can't seem to figure that out. You know, things that are a little bit more touchy, if you will. And you just can't seem to figure out how to agree to disagree and move on without belittling somebody and, and making them feel so insignificant. But when it comes to things of pop culture, you know, we can have a conversation. We can agree to disagree. We can, you can like one thing. I can think it's absolute trash, but we have common ground and still liking the same type of stuff. We still like video games. We like comic movies. We like sci-fi films. You know, we have that common ground and you can have those conversations. So uh, I think it's, I think it's just a, it's a great way to bridge gaps i think it's a great way to bridge divides absolutely i think pop culture is doing just that it, it's not doing everything out there for us and it can't do everything but <laughs> it can try to bridge those gaps that we have out there on other things and hopefully bring people together in a way that a lot of people didn't think that we could be brought together at least in recent times so hopefully people can start enjoying things i know we've been through a tough time in our lives here with the pandemic and all that, I think a lot of people have really gone through it rough, a lot of losses, both on a personal and also a professional basis out there on what's going on because of the coronavirus. But pop culture in some ways is trying to help us bring us out of these dark times. And it's got us through a lot of these dark times as well yeah. with a lot of the things that people were talking about. Going back to the early days and people were talking about how Tiger King was something that's transformational <laughs> and people just were so amazed and that was the talk of the world yeah. back in the day that's just one of the yeah. examples that's out there as far as pop culture yeah. being something that people can connect with and talk about without having to go ahead and be be at each other's throats so hoping yeah. pop culture will play a more prominent role in our society going forward but you know what it does a great job with us here and 
TJ, I cannot thank you enough, as always, for sharing your thoughts on this. It's been a very moving and emotional subject for everyone out there when it comes to pop culture. There's so many great memories, so many personal feelings that people have in pop culture, and I'm glad you got a chance to share yours. Plus, I want to thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on Ghostwire Tokyo and also as well Gran Turismo 7 for the PlayStation coming very soon. Both games are right around the corner in the next month, I believe. They're both March releases, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Yeah, so. Yeah, I believe so. Absolutely. So they're coming around the corner. Any last thoughts before we head on out? No, man. Just excited to continue being a part of the Pop Culture Cosmos for as long as you'll have me. Absolutely, my friend. I know you have some time right now, so it's always great to have you on the show while you have the time. So I cannot thank you enough for stopping by, and I'm looking forward to bringing you back on whenever you want. The red carpet is always open, my friend, right here for you (laughs) at the Pop Culture Cosmos. If you're in the Las Vegas and Henderson areas and are looking to buy, sell, or trade the best in classic or current video games and pop culture collectibles, there's no better place to go than Retro City Games. From Xbox to PlayStation, Nintendo to Atari, the great crew at Retro City Games provides the best place to go for all your gaming options. Stop by their two awesome locations in Henderson and also the Las Vegas Strip, or follow Retro City Games on Facebook and Instagram for all the latest deals and new items. Without a doubt, there's no better place to go for your gaming needs than your friends at Retro City Games. All right, we're back on the program. It's Gerald Glass. We're coming right back at you here with the PCC Multiverse. Thank you so much for watching and listening. I'll tell you what. When the movies that are coming out this weekend to the theaters, and one of them has the digits 666, and it's the only wide release of any of the major new releases, you're thinking to yourself, okay, what's going on? And if you look more into depth, you see that this is a passion project. I don't know if it's the right kind of passion project, as some people have been saying over the course of the week, but (laughs) the guy behind it is one of the stalwarts of the music industry, a two-time Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, Dave Grohl, whose passion project is now coming onto the screen in Studio 666. I feel like I've got Kathy Bates from The Waterboy on my right shoulder saying, it's the devil, the devil. (laughs) But it is a possession movie of a different kind. And here today to try to convince Mm -hmm. you out there that you might want to go ahead and check out this latest offering in the horror genre. He's a good man indeed. As his best friend, actually, his compadre in crime, Mr. Rob McCallum, director extraordinaire, would say he is the superstar behind action figure adventure. He is the star behind the amazing documentary Nintendo Quest. And he is the star behind so much more including the jay and rob toy show which you which you can see on jinx tv and you can also catch it wherever you get your podcasts plus for all you toy aficionados you got to check out youtube today and subscribe to the jay bartlett channel indeed i've known this guy now for seven years and i've been so blessed to do so and how we both put up with with his crazy friend and my crazy friend (laughs) mr rob mccallum is something strange indeed but it is Jay Bartlett and Jay. Great to have you here, my friend. We both have a passion for pop culture and a passion to go ahead and rib Rob McCallum. Yeah, Rob and I do that every Wednesday, and it's kind of funny. But uh, these are such kind words. Thank you, my friend. I, I miss oh. you. It's been uh, quite a long time since I've been Same on your here. show. I think we were talking. It geez, was Star I Wars. I think it was maybe when Mando came out or yes. I don't want to say it was solo. I think it was a Mandalorian came out. Yeah. When we talked. Yeah. That was a long time ago. It was, I think we also talked around last Skywalker, unfortunately. Oh, right. Skywalker. Yeah. I'm, I'm in that camp with you now. I agree that <laughs> so, that trilogy, it's just, it's no good. And I, we're not going to get into that anyway. Yeah, we're not gonna, that's a, that's another conversation. That's another for show. Another day. Yeah. But I, I didn't know I was supposed to sell this film i haven't well, seen it so well, okay, um, well i'm just gonna say this you i mean if there's anyone out there that stuck out immediately to me because this dave Grohl yeah. project again coming off the heels of uncharted where the movie theaters are starting to open up again people are starting to come back to the theaters worldwide and this is here in the states the only wide release of this week 
and horror movies they usually will capitalize on a horror audience for the maybe one or two weeks where they can really make their money but this comes something different from dave grohl who has described this in terms as a passion project of his that's something he's wanting to get on the screen for some time and there's no better person to talk to because of your appreciation for his lifelong work. So tell me first yeah. off your appreciation over the years of Dave Grohl and how that all started. Well, I was a drummer or I'm still a drummer. I've been a drummer since I was 13 years old and I love music almost instantly. My, my mom had the radio on 24 seven. So I like the rap music, pop music, rock music, metal, all that stuff comes from top 40 stuff. And I wanted to play the drums, so I got into Zeppelin, ACDC, that kind of thing. And like everyone else, it got hit hard in the 1990s. And I was still a big Kiss fan, Motley Crue, all that stuff. And then when the Seattle bands came out, everyone has that moment where they can remember where they were when they saw or heard It Smells Like Teen Spirit. And I was across the road at a neighbor's house just hanging out with her, and we saw it. And I just remember like these three dirty, small guys – greasy hair but the most melodic beautiful melodies coming out of uh, kurt and it just changed me and to see dave on drums is like an animal right he plays a lot like john bonham just he's almost dancing on the drums and became very very infatuated with nirvana and that whole scene and then of course kurt passed and my love for dave came in foo fighters and He's been my number one inspiration ever since musically and just the way he lives and his positive messages are very inspiring. So it doesn't surprise me that he's doing a horror movie. It doesn't surprise me that he's doing uh, another film that's going to hit the theater. So I'm well, I mean, when he, he well, when he first announced it, were you, oh, you said you're not surprised, but it kind of had you second guessing that, you know, this was something that was kind of different unless you've yeah. always known that he's had this kind of appreciation into getting into movies and specifically horror movies in general. Yeah, I mean, he's close friends with Jack Black from Tenacious D, and obviously um, he appears in Tenacious D videos and in their feature film, The Pick of Destiny, which is a, a music comedy. It's fantastic. It doesn't surprise me he's doing a music-themed horror movie. I, I mean, look at the resume of the man. He's done literally everything. He's accomplished everything, and he is at the top of mainstream rock and roll tier. I mean, he's leading the charge, right? There's not many, many left that could still sell out arenas and still do tours, but Foo Fighters just, they could play anywhere, anytime. And that's quite an achievement. And I remember first time meeting him was in 97 in a little, um, a little town in um, Michigan. It was just me and a couple buddies and we were waiting to see them at this venue called Clutch Cargos, which was an old abandoned church, housed like two, 300 people maybe. Uh -huh. we were just standing there in the back we didn't expect anything and their tour bus pulled up and we were just like oh my god like for real and they came out and there was nobody around and we just got to talk with them and it was then that i it, that was kind of my first brush with like a rock star and it was really i, I just found the experience with him so down to earth and he, he was so real and he wasn't like this larger than life presence he was just a guy i couldn't get over how small he was you know you have this image of rock stars and there's gigantic tiny guy and yeah i met him a few times since about five or six times and every time it's just been amazing but you've always been a great admirer of his work and yeah uh, in this yeah. latest work of his uh, it's basically a setup that's Nothing unlike, let's say, what you're seeing with uh, another horror movie that's coming up, X, or basically this in this scenario in Studio 666, there, I guess they take over, the group goes ahead and records or takes over this, this big house, this haunted house, and the calamity or horror starts from there as far as possession and things of that nature, as far as while they're trying to go ahead and record an album. Am I... Under that understanding, it's what I'm reading from, and also seeing yeah. from the synopsis and the trailer so far. There's obviously Dave gets possessed by whatever. Again, I haven't seen it. It comes out Friday. this weekend. It comes out, yeah, this weekend. So he gets possessed and starts to, you know, take out the bandmates one at a time, obsessed with finishing this record. So I assume it's kind of going to be like Pick a Destiny kind of thing, where it's, you know, the devil's work and that kind of thing. Uh, it's very tongue in cheek. I don't think it's meant to be serious. If you look at, 
I mean, the, even their earliest of videos, their first video, their second video, sorry, Big Me, where they spoof the Mentos commercial of the 90s. I mean, they've yeah. all, they're always doing comedic stuff where they all star in it. So this is just kind of one step above that, I think. Uh, I don't think it's going to, you know, bump Halloween or Friday the 13th <laughs> out of the spotlight as far as the greatest horror movie of, every time, or of all time. But uh, it just looks like a fun thing. And I mean, you have the resources. Why not? Right. I mean, why not? Absolutely. Why not? This is something he's probably wanted to do for some time. So it's great to see him go ahead and, and I guess live this part of his life out. But if you can go ahead and close this out before we talk about what you're up to with all your great stuff, yeah. if you could close this out for people out there that might be interested in going and checking out a movie this weekend, if they're fans of Dave Grohl, fans of the Foo Fighters and of the horror genre, you think it's going to be something for them? This is my last thing about the film is I, I watched this little clip uh, yesterday, and this is how humbling this man is. So there's a part in the film where he has to play this super shredding lick on the guitar. And he simply says, I can't do that. And his neighbor across the road in real life is Steve Vai. So he texts Steve Vai. Steve comes over. Uh, they draw Dave's tattoos on his arms and Dave gives him his guitar. And so it's actually from the neck down, Steve Vai doing this <laughs> guitar solo. I just think stuff like that's cool. You know, he's never one to be like, I'm the best guitarist of all time. He knows his limitations. Uh, that's just a really wonderful story. It is studio... 666. It is the latest offering from Dave Grohl. It's going to be something I think horror fans and also Dave Grohl fans will be able to go ahead and check out and enjoy. It's coming up this weekend. But before we head on out, my friend, I want to put the focus on you and all the great things you're doing. First oh. off, action figure adventure. I mean, it did so well in its initial offering. You've got season two. You've also mm -hmm. got the Jay and Rob show on Jinx TV and also wherever you get your podcast and your YouTube channel. How do you handle it all? It's difficult, but it's a lot of fun. Like, you know, because you live for your passions as well. The YouTube stuff, my solo stuff, I kind of just decided, like everyone during the pandemic when it hits, you know, January 2020 or whatever, I was going to teach myself how to edit. I was going to teach myself lighting, how to shoot, and I did. So that's how that started. And it's been a blast. It's kind of different doing something by yourself because you don't have to answer to anybody. So if I want to get up late, I can, but then I kick myself in the ass later. The YouTube stuff is a lot of fun. If you guys like toys, that's what Rob and I are really specializing in. We kind of found, we still love video games. Don't think that, that that's going away anytime soon, but the toys is something that really hits us in the heart. Action figure adventure. We shot season two last August, 2021. So that should be out this year. And the Jay and Rob toy show is in its second season. And hopefully, hopefully we'll be doing a third season this year. And you've done so many uh, good things as far as the fundraisers for the children's hospital up there in Canada. So please go ahead. And if you want to go and give them a shout out, please, the floor is yours on that one. As yeah, well. the auction is live right now. Out of all the items, we're on our third item right now, which is a, a first generation sound wave from Transformers from 1984, box complete. All you do is you go on the Facebook page, Action Figure Adventure. All the links are there to my personal eBay. And all the proceeds earned from these toys go to Children's Health Foundation. And they can also check out the video of said sound wave on your YouTube channel. Because that yeah, just got today. I, I made that just to kind of like a, a compendium piece. Just to kind of show off what you're kind of getting if you're bidding on it. But this piece is insane. It's like, you know, you're, you're walking into a Toys R Us in 1984 kind of thing. Absolutely. I mean, the great memories are there for both you and I when you, yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure when you handle something like that, or you first get that in that sound wave with the Transformers or whatever toy or video game, it's that feeling that you had when yeah. back in the seventies and eighties for me. And uh, I think uh, that's something that I can't soon forget. It's just that feeling of what it was like whenever I'm playing a game, a retro game or or if like, again, when you're collecting your toys or video games that for auction or for documentary, it's just that feeling that you have that, that you experience once again, that well, like when you were a kid. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. And a lot of this stuff to Rob and I, you know, it means a lot because uh, both our moms, we have different moms, but I mean, his mom and my mom, we're very close and all this stuff just, you know, because of them, that's where we are. That's why we love video games so much because of them. So they've both passed in the last few years. But all this stuff, yeah, picking up a, 
Silver Surfer or a G.I. Joe figure, whatever, it reminds us of them and, and the good times. And like a good song, you know, you hear a good poison song or something, you can put yourself in that high school dance or whatever. It's the same thing for these toys. So it's really nice to have those nostalgic feelings. Oh, it's awesome to hear indeed. And then again, if you can go ahead and start off your mission in following Jay Bartlett with his YouTube channel, Jay Bartlett, you'll actually see the said Soundwave Transformers right there for you that you can bid on and be a part of. And go. And it all goes to a great charity. And of course, everything that he does with the Jay and Rob Toy Show, which of course he stars in, and of course, Rob co-stars. And of course, the Jay and Rob Toy Show. <laughs> James. I'm sorry. We, I got love for you, Rob. You know I do, my friend, but you know I got to go ahead and give you some shout outs. But you know what, my friend? It's just so great having you here. Before we go, one last thing. If you could just say in a few seconds, wrap this up the book of Boba Fett, yay or nay? Uh, that's awful. It's completely awful. <laughs> I don't even have to ask you. I know you you feel the same way. Well, I've been saying I've been calling it the book of Sloba Fett. So uh, unfortunately, it didn't develop Boba Fett the way I think a lot of people had hoped. In fact, it might have ruined people's. It ruined, uh, it ruined it, Boba it, Fett. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I liked seeing. I, I like the Luke stuff was great. The Mando stuff was great. Don't get me wrong. But, but he but took I've, over Mandalorian. Took I've over. never seen. I was just gonna say, man. I've never seen a TV show hijack another TV show mid season. It was the weirdest thing. It's almost like as they were shooting this series, they they're like, this isn't very good. Let's get that other guy in here. That uh, let's get Favreau back at the home. And I'm sorry. What's Robert Rodriguez doing in star Wars. But anyway, enough. We'll we'll do another, let's do another show, man. Have me on another time. We'll talk about a good episode of the Mandalorian season two. I will give him that. I thought that the episode that he directed in season two was sure. But to take the helm, I just don't see it. And as soon as I saw uh, machete, I can't remember his name, Danny Trejo or whatever his name is. Yeah. Yeah. I was just, it brought me right out of, I was like, are you kidding me, man? Like, and I have nothing but respect for that actor, but yeah, it's like seeing if you were to see Brad Pitt, you know, it would just be like, what is going on here? You know, that might be next. You never know. But uh, never my know. friend, again, if you want to come back on, talk Star Wars, talk sure. video games, talk action figures, because it's big money now collecting all this stuff. It's big money. All so, this stuff. And it's it's cool yeah. to see a resurgence in comic books and sports cards. That's one good thing that's come out of what's happened in the last two years is people have gravitated towards what they love. And they're just going for it now because... Who knows what's going to happen, right? So, Absolutely. But hopefully all the things that you've collected that are going to a great cause, people can be a part of today. And it starts off with your channel on YouTube. So please go ahead and subscribe and check out the Jay Bartlett channel today on YouTube. Also as well, the Jay and Rob Toy Show, which is available on Jinx TV in Canada and wherever you get your podcasts. Plus also as well, Action Figure Adventure Season 2 coming up later this year. Season one is still out there. You said on Roku, Amazon Prime, correct? It's on Amazon Prime and uh, Tubi, the app Tubi, Tubi, which is a fantastic app that's just really growing a lot of good stuff on there, too. And don't forget Nintendo Quest. You can see some deleted scenes on your good friend, your best friend's mm-hmm. YouTube channel. That would be Robert McCallum. So you want to go ahead and check that out there. But Jay, it's great to have you here, my friend. You've been Aww. sensational as always. I wish you continued success. I wish Dave Grohl success on the well again kathy bates right there on my shoulder saying the devil it's the devil but (laughs) yeah i I think it's gonna do good if it's gonna sell it or not only time will tell i i hope it does man i think it's the kind of light-hearted stuff that we need right now so Uh, let's hope it'll do well indeed but my friend it's great having you here once again looking forward again the red carpet is always out for both you and your best friend Mr. Rob McGowan, who's such a great part of the show. It's like, I'm not going to call up Letterman and, and say, hey, man, can I be on your show? It's That's your job. So you just right, extend it out right. to me anytime you know I'm I'm always here, man. I love being fair on your enough, show. Fair enough. Well, we hear Rob is spot every single episode, so he's always around, whether yeah. we like it or not. But we always <laughs> like it. So big shout out once again to Rob. But for you, my friend, Mr. Jay Bartlett, I cannot thank you enough. I will be calling upon you again because great. it's always great having you here, right here at the Pop Culture Cosmos. Thanks so much to Jay Bartlett, TJ Johnson, and Hamanish Goel for being on today's program. We've got another great show lined up for you as Josh Peterson and I 
will prep you on what to look forward to next week in pop culture. Don Fobbs hopefully will also check in with her monthly TV update, and Josh has been playing the next-gen update for Cyberpunk 2077, so he will have some thoughts on it. And the latest video game that's out there, Elden Ring, hits release this weekend, so that we will cover, and we will go into why this could be one of the best-reviewed games of all time. So I am looking forward to another great show dropping on podcast outlets on Monday and around the world on radio next week right here on the Pop Culture Cosmos. So for everyone here at the Pop Culture Cosmos, this is Gerald Glassford. It's another beautiful day in paradise right here in the PCC Multiverse. We thank you for listening. And here's hoping you have yourself a great day. At the 42 Cast, we want to bring you everything. And that's why we've jam-packed the next few months with as much as we can. You not only get the same reviews, topics, and interviews that you did before, you also get screen reads where we compare a movie to its source material, or role models where we talk about tabletop gaming. It's never been a more exciting time to check out our show. It's your ultimate answer to fandom, geekiness, and everything. So why not check it out? We can be found on most podcasting platforms, and we are a proud member of the ESO Network. You're listening to a Weeby Geeks Network podcast. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping for the T Public Store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Tangent Bound Network. Let your voice be heard. Tangentboundnetwork.com. Thanks so much for downloading the Pop Culture Cosmos and stay tuned as more great podcasts are on the way. Thanks again for listening to us here at the Pop Culture Cosmos.